Oh, thank you for staying with us. Uh, it's health now, and we're discussing what you need to know about gum diseases. And now we have Dr. Femi Aderia. He's a dedicated clinician with a passion for the highest standards in clinical dentistry. He's the CEO of Pearl Dental Clinic Lagos. It is great to have you. Thank you. It's you nice are one doctor that many people would not like to see so much. <laughs> well, I've, I've heard that before. You've heard that before, that yeah, due time. to uh, the pains that can be associated with. Uh, dental issues and all of that, yes. but the gum, the gum, of course. Uh, of, uh, to let's just uh, let's 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 take this to the basis level. What is the gum? What is its function in the whole setup of the teeth and the mouth? Okay, so um, thank you for having me. It's great to be here again. You're welcome. Um, in a nutshell, the gums are the tissues that support the teeth. Mm. The soft pink tissue covers the hard bone in which the teeth are set. Mm. So that's basically the gums, that supporting tissues for your teeth. How important is this gum in the whole function of things? Well, um, it helps to protect, you know, the bone and the teeth from otherwise infections or trauma. Okay. And um, aesthetics as well. Mm. And nutrition for the teeth, blood oh. supply and everything. All right, wonderful. So, so let's get straight to it now. Those diseases that we talk about that could affect the gum, what are those diseases and probably how could they be prevented or maybe cured if they do come? Well, gum diseases are um, intraoral infections that affect the gums. Mm. Now, it could be in one area or it could be all over the gums, generalized. So it um, is mostly preventable, but it's very common. It's mm. mostly preventable, but very common. You have, um, I'd like to break it down into two. Gingivitis, which basically affects the gums around the teeth. Okay. Now, gingivitis is an inflammatory um, condition that is caused by the buildup of plaque on the teeth. And, of course, the buildup of plaque is due to poor oral hygiene. Okay. Now, poor oral hygiene is the blood biggest culprit because poor oral hygiene allows the plaque to proliferate and increase, and increase. in volume. And that goes on to inf and irritate, um, irritate and inflame the gums. Now, if this isn't managed it gets worse. So it gets worse and becomes what we call periodontitis. Mm. Now, when it goes to periodontitis, then it has affected not just the soft tissue, but the hard tissue wow. in the periodontum as well. So we're talking about your gums and your jawbone in which your teeth are set. It's set? Yes. Wow. OK, so when all of this happens, what next? How do we cure? Now, we're looking at if you were unable to prevent it, curative me uh, measures now. Um, before we go to curative measure, okay. measures, let's talk about the prevention. First okay, of all. prevention. Yes, right. because it's, it's a condition that ranges from mild to severe. To severe. So in the mild stage, there is what we call self-care, which you have a role to play. Mm. And that is by improving on your oral hygiene practice, brushing twice a day, flossing every day. And it goes beyond that to getting six monthly checkups with your dentist where you get the professional cleaning as a scale and polish, which is quite... Um, Quite an experience for some. Mm, it um, can be. It can, it can be. be quite an experience for it some. It can be, you know. Yes. And then we go to um, when it's a bit moderate, then you need the intervention of medication. Uh, topical antiseptics, antibiotics, anti-inflammatory painkillers, all of these to manage the symptoms that you get. And then in the severe phase, that's where you need the intervention of really serious specialists where surgical procedures are required. That reason is... Like I said, it can progress from mild to severe, so mild, moderate, severe. In the severe case, the symptoms you find are quite disturbing. You, know, you mm. have a lot of bleeding, you have mobile teeth, your teeth become mobile, you get, some people begin to lose teeth. And then you get, um, of course, something that is constant with them, this bad breath. Mm. It is persistent. It doesn't go away because the oral soft tissues are breaking down so fast and so your body fast. can't really manage Wow. manage it so uh, in that case you get you have to you have um, advanced procedures like uh, gingivectomies grafts bone grafts and all of that wow. sometimes you have to do a graft um, sometimes you even have to clear out all the teeth because the oral hard, hard tissues are all compromised oh, and you have to do a graft and do some specialized treatment like implants on the others so I know of that. it's it's quite interesting it's quite diverse it is it is completely treatable Okay. Completely preventable. Preventable. But there's a note, you know, in certain medical conditions, you know, they, the risk factors associated with 
this, those medical conditions like right. diabetes. Okay. It's diabetes and uh, heart disease. Heart diseases. Yes. All right. Can and that, cha teeth? that channel is it's that root. It's like going down a rabbit hole. It's a different. It's a different, different entirely specialty different entirely. One. But it is possible. Would you, in those kind of scenarios, you, would you have to treat the root cause, say the heart disease or the diabetes, before you get to the teeth section? Well, Can you treat the teeth it, separately in that scenario? Well, the truth is, uh, in that kind of scenario, you have a multi-specialty multi approach. So you okay. have a team. Either you put together a team or it's basically by referral. Okay. So you know a patient is um, a cardiac patient okay. and uh, the cardiologist will refer to the dentist to make sure that the intraoral health is pristine. Okay. Um, I've had to do, do preventive um, skill and polish and root planing for patients who are going to go into um, heart surgery. Heart surgery? Yes, wow. it's very important. All right, now there's this debate that has been, you know, on on social media for a while. Rinsing after brushing or leaving it. You know, people, we've had uh, doctors who have said, look, the problem with many of us is that, well, when we brush and we, you know, we rinse out and everything, mm -hmm. you, you know, you don't keep the toothpaste long enough to have an effect. What, as, as, as a dentist, what is it? Do you rinse after you brush or do you just brush and let it stay? Um, I'm not going to dictate to anybody. I will just tell you my own personal Okay, yes. Okay, let's have your own preference. personal. So, um, in the morning, after you brush your teeth, rinse out. Mm. You're going to be talking, you're going to be eating. I don't think anybody wants to have toothpaste in their mouth when they're having breakfast. Mm. At night... After brushing, rinse just a little. You might leave some in your mouth. Okay. The longer the fluoride toothpaste stays in contact with your teeth, the more mm. fluoride is absorbed. Okay. Now, this does make sense. The longer the fluoride stays in contact with your teeth, yes. the more it is absorbed, and yes. then it gets to work. It gets to work. Mm. And for children as well, mm. especially those that are prone to caries for various reasons, okay. it also helps. Okay. Well, you know... Children love sweet things, so by yeah, the time exactly. you put the toothpaste in their mouth, they're sucking the toothbrush it. dry. Yeah. So that's why they always advise that you use a very minimal very amount. Very minimal amount for kids. Fluoride isn't something that should be ingested in large, in large concentrations. Now, there's also um, there's also a school of thought that say that you don't even need toothbrush to clean the teeth. That just the the back and forth movement of the brush on the teeth is enough. To oh, do sorry, you don't need toothpaste. Pardon me. You don't need toothpaste. Um, that the back and forth movement from the brush is enough I see. to clean the mouth. Is that what do you think about that? Well, yes, it does some cleaning. But let's not forget that toothpaste is made up of so many constituents, part of which is something like, well, like a detergent. And if that was the case, why don't you just put your clothes in water and just wash it without using detergent and say it will clean it up? I like you, doctor. <laughs> I like the way you put this. So, yes, if you put your clothes in water, it has some effect, but then with yes. detergent, it will do yes. better. So, your advice to do that. Thank you so much, Doctor. And Thank looking you for forward having to having you, of course, over the course of this month. Uh, Thank you. Looking forward. All right. Thank you very much. So, hope you're able uh, to pick up something there.